So you do things to impress people. But when the hard stuff comes, eh, it is you and your, your spouse. So, so, so the issue of money is not how much you need. Have some useful work. Then the second thing, in the same aspect, live within your means. Eh? So, 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 and then if you are marrying, then you know the, this, your spouse. You must have that financial understanding that this is our level, number one. Okay. So, so if you are a man, get a lady who is, who is within your financial ability. For the lady, understand this man's financial ability so that you don't come with demands that he cannot meet. So the, the, the thing is not about how much money you need. So remove that. Be usefully engaged. Sawa sawa. At that level, get, if Kamba Moise afford uh, a grand wedding, wh what is the purpose of a wedding? It's to get blessings from your pastor. Sindio. So why don't you, uh, as a small group, form a small group of friends, get the pastor to bless the union, get the blessings of the parents. Those are the two important things. Sindio. And then pay the dowry as part of the customary. And if you, if you get in laws who are understanding and who want the relationship progress, they will assist in terms of not placing extraneous de demands on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the marriage, on what they request for as dowry. Because it's just symbolic and a source of, uh, it's a sign of respect and uh, it also shows that you, as a man, you, you do things in order, okay? So, so let's not focus on uh, how much money is required. It will make you, it will make you kwe na ule ugumu wakwanya nini? Kuo ama kuolewa. Sawa, sawa. But don't marry somebody who is not working. Because after marrying, lazima kwe na maitaji. Bills have to be paid. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's appreciate him. <laughs> now, before I move uh, from Ms., uh, Minister Bernard, um, kindly, sir, would you mention maybe an experience you had maybe when you were dating and it was touching on money? We want to hear from you how maybe which were your worries and uh, maybe how many ladies rejected you because of the issues of finances? <laughs> good, good. We want to hear something from that angle. Wow, Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bye. Yeah, now, the first thing, eh? Mm. I have to restructure my thoughts. At first, I married when I was not saved. Okay. That, is, that, that has to be clear. So I was not saved. So we didn't do the wedding. We do, uh, so I'm, I'm not recommending that. Eh? Because I was in the dark. Before I do it, I, I was transformed. So the thing is, uh, but what was in my mind at the time, and what was critical is, I was not going to marry without a job. That was already built in me. Because I knew the first thing you must be able to, to, to provide for your house, the man must be able to provide, okay? So it was not in my mind to marry without uh, finances. So the issue of rejection never arose, okay? Because the preparation was more important than that. So I had to first prepare myself in terms of having a means then after that, you progress to the next level, which is now getting what? Getting a wife, marrying. Okay. So, and ladies are smart, isn't it? Even when a smart lady will not get married into, uh, get married by somebody who is not having means. Because you're Nishida. Okay. All right. So once you have a job as a man, then you progress the next step. So the issues of rejections, they were neither here nor there for me. Yeah, so, so from my experience, the, the mistakes most, most ladies do is they, they, want to, they, they, they want to be married based on love alone. Okay? And that is dangerous. Okay? Because a man must cultivate something. So you are going there as a helper. Okay? So if there's nothing to help, what are you going to help? Oh my. Isn't it? Yes. When God created uh, Adam, Akasema, it is good not for a man to be alone. He needs what? 
he called the wife a helper. So you only help where there's something to help. Okay. So utaolewa na muna nyumba anishi kwa na na nini? Na wazazi wake. It's not practical, isn't it? Where are you going to? Or you you get married to somebody, mzazaka memkombolea nyumba, they pay for his rent, they determine his pocket money. Those are, those are faulty foundations. Okay. So when I say my na e, anatafuta kazi. You move into his bed seat or whatever, but the source of provision is are the parents. So, so, so th those are, those are problems already. So get get it well. So the issues of rejections, from my personal experience, it was not it was not, it was not an issue, because I knew the timing. So once I took care of the timing, everything was okay. Wow! Thank you so much. Let's appreciate him. Now, uh, today's talk is on, uh, yes, I'm coming there to you, Ghislaine. Today's talk is on you then finance. So youth and finance, I am young. I'm looking for a wife. I'm looking for a partner. I am young. I want to start a family. I want to settle. You have had the topic today being handled and the questions being answered. Uh, question to you before I come to delay. Um, Catherine, can you tell us what you have learned? Even one point. Kindly. Just shout it. <laughs> there is a Catherine behind you. Okay, the, the other Catherine continues. Yes. Yeah, the other Catherine. No. This is Kate. Okay. Before the other Catherine talks, let Kate talk. Okay. Uh, a microphone is coming to you. Use microphone uh, kindly. Uh, uh, I think you don't really need a big wedding, or rather, the wedding is very. According to me, it's, it's a very small uh, factor to your marriage. The marriage, uh, marriage is actually what after the ceremony. Marriage is not the ceremony. So I think I really love that point that you don't just get the blessings from your pastor with a few of your uh, parents and the people you love, and then you you do the marriage. Yeah. Or to I think excuse it to than I love that point. That's a nice point. Yamusho, uh huh. A young man. A fellow young man, Pasi, Pasi, Pasi. Oh, Pasi, you have a point. Great. Okay, let's go to Gile. Then uh, we'll be back. Uh, huh, Gile, Karibu. Yeah, yeah, just something yes. I wanted to add on on the issue of uh, you asked about uh, the rejection and whatever. Actually, actually, what happened to me? I had a girlfriend at the time. And uh, it reached a point. I told her, "No, I think we can't. We can't continue, because I was I was looking for work. I was looking for employment, and now I was feeling this uh, relationship. I was kind of inconveniencing now this lady because I was not I was not available emotionally. Because you know you know men tend to be one dimensional. Eh? Men men tend to be one dimensional. A woman can multitask. You can be doing this. Unafanya hii, unafanya hii. A man, what if if something is preoccupying my mind, I'll tend to concentrate on that. So if 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 I'm studying and I'm focused on studying, Utapata, my mind is there. If if I try to do two things, one has to lose. Women are gifted to do more, more than one. So at the time, my mind was in getting work. So and then there were, there were these demands, relationship demands. So umenilenga, nini, unipigi simu, all those issues. Eh? Then I realized I'm. I'm holding this person and wasting her, her time. And I didn't know how, how long it would take me to get my first job. So, no, so, so I, had to, I had to talk to the lady in Kawambia now. I think I need to release you. It was, no, it was not an, an, easy, an easy experience, but I had to do it for, for my sake and her, for her sake. Okay. I think that is what I needed to add. Okay. Wonderful. That's from my experience. Okay. At least we are getting something. Okay. So. I'm going to delay, but when we are moving there to Kikava Kitu Haturudi Apo, unless Sasa itakuwa person on you and Minister Bernard, Unataka Kumambia Malifulani, Nitaka Kujua Zaidi. Sasa, 
is ready to work with us as young people and is a devoted uh, man of God. I can tell you from the people he works with, uh, the likes of Akina Maxwell, when you hear them talk, you know they have been mentored by the right person. When they he talks to young people, they learn something. Wisdom. When you walk with the wise, you become wise. Now, we have gotten it clearly that um, for you to think of having a family, be sure of earning a living. Is that the point? Yeah, it is advisable. It is so, advisable. Achali usioe kama una kazi. Just a rejoinder to that. Eh? Yes. Uh, this is my personal opinion also. Mm. It could be you are the man and the, the, and the, and the lady. You are in a relationship. The lady could be having work. Now, if you feel you have to marry, then the lady must really be... Uh, the man does not have work, the lady has work. Now, it has to be clear in your discussions that you are marrying, but you are the source of provision, and the lady must accept it. Okay? So that you move in. Eh? What I'm saying is this. Eh? Let's say you've graduated too. You are graduates. Mwaja na taftakazi. Mgina ya? Kazi. The lady has work, he's employed, she's employed. The man, Maybe you're feeling the time is drawing near and we need to do what? We need to marry. So that the aspects of when you want to start your marriage, okay? If you have to marry under such circumstances, the lady has to be aware that at a support your marriage financially. Okay. Uh, uh, am I making sense? Why am I saying that? Eh? Because this lady they're in love, okay, you are in love. But this guy is not getting your kazi araka, but akona potential. You can see as a lady, this guy has a vision for his life. The only thing he's lacking is employment. Isn't really? And you know, if you work with this person, pale mbele atafanya nini? Vitu zitamfungukia. Are you getting my point? Yes. So as a lady, you have understood this man. Umemwelewa, this is a man with vision. Because the first thing you have to understand is that this person must have a vision. So even when you are dating, what is the vision of? this? Does he have a vision? Okay. So now, if you are making the decision to marry, then you must come in with the understanding that over time, you know, you know, even as the woman, you can support this man to start a business and you go far in marriage. Okay. So th Because the world has changed. When we used to live, the, the old days, eh? The woman will stay at home, the man works. Okay. But now the modern woman, what happens? She also goes to work, isn't it? Yes. So it can happen that the, the woman is more blessed. I'm a patakazi, it's a better paying job. And what they can sit and say, now what are we going to do here? You are not getting work, but I think from what I'm seeing, you are good in what? In business or something. So what am I I'm going to finance it in the marriage, not before the marriage. In the marriage so that together you can grow because who knows eh, tomorrow this business might become even bigger than the employment okay so that is the premise of which i'm trying to guide that if you have to come in then that understanding must be clear from the onset amen amen hallelujah hallelujah now gile wait a minute uh, wait a minute Nataka, nataka kitu moja gile, nataka kitu moja, um, nataka kitu moja. Kitu gani yu? Kutoka kwako. Yes, gani yu? Kutoka kwako. So, Before you talk, I want you to wake up, stand up, mm -hmm. na usiogope, usiogope, stand up, aya, nataka mm -hmm. unisaidie kukaribisha mgeni ambaya mekuja, na ataka lia yu kitu mekalia, ala kutakujo ni mimi ni kukaribisha kwa hii kitu yangu. Sao, sao, tumpikie makofi. Ah, our Reverend John Muli is in the house. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate him as he comes on board. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Aya, karibu hapa gile. Gile karibu hapa. Karibu hapa. Mimi nitabaki na simama. Uh, Tukiendeleza hama zungumzu. Reverend, karibu sana. And uh, we have been tackling the issue of youth and finances. Now, we have just handled one question this morning. We are coming to you shortly. I want to hear from Gile shortly and uh, Eva. Miss Eva, 
They will talk to us and to Gile. First, go ahead and tell us what was in your heart. Because I'm coming to you again. Nilikuwa niulizie kitu. Yes. Ya uh, kufuatana na vile venye Minister Bernard anamaliza kusema hapa. Baza mm. sauti vizuri. Yes, kusema kuwa okay, you don't encourage someone to marry without a, a work. Inaeleweka vizuri sana. Uh, nasema what if my, my lady don't have a work, hafanyi kazi na mimi nafanya kazi and then tunapendana inafikia point tunataka kuoana we want to to get married maybe ni sema two or one month before ninavutwa kazi mimi ambaye nilikuwa na kazi navutwa kazi na kumbuka yeye hana kazi so tuta push uh, our program of getting married for maybe another year ama tunaweza tu get married to safe pamoja nataka nikukula kwa sababu tunazimanga tutaishi katika shida na katika raha so will we get married to safe pamoja tuvumiliane katika hiyo muda tukitafuta wote makazi ama una to encourage to tuachane nayo to cancel your program to work for maybe another year to come yeah. so uh, that question yile before minister bernard answers want us to have a word from Rev concerning the same question okay we want to hear from the point of experience is the one is the vijana reverend tazi handle namna gani tafadhali jibu hilo swali na pia ukituambia jina yako kama umeoa na ulioa lini tupate kujua from experience asante eh nisaidie tena kuuliza swali Tunaomba uji introduce yes. kwanza alafu jibu hiyo Thank you. Eh uh, bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Naitwa John Muli na nimeokoka na kuna msichana nimeoa na nakaa naye. <laughs> na tumefanikiwa na watoto wawili vijana. Tunatarajia watatu na inamaanisha niko na jamii. Thank you. Uliza. Yes. So the question ya Gile Atauliza tena kwa kifupi uipate clearly na ni part of what minister Bernard has tackled in, in uh, apo before yes. and still we are on the question how much money do i need to have in the bank account in the min on the minimum side to consider starting a family we have been given an answer as so long as you are working do not worry but if you are not working be very worried so gile is asking still a question related to that and he will do it again shortly thank you eh uh, japo maswali yote mawili yako na kile inataka kukaribiana lakini utapata kuna utofauti kidogo kwa hivyo wacha nianze na yako unauliza how much does someone need to have in their account to consider getting married or settling down with a family eh uh, i'm talking from the experience from what I know and what I've gone through. And people, you realize that we have different aspects of life. Venye unaangalia maisha yako sio venye nitaangalia yangu. So yangu nitaisukuma venye naona ina style kuwa. Na vile vile yako pia inaweza kuwa tofauti na vile utaiendeleza. So I'll give my opinion based on my personal experience. Of course because that's what I can give. One you realize that there is no any amount of money that is enough for someone to get married hakuna kiwango yoyote imewahi kuwa inatosha ndio mtu a decide nitaoa ama sitaoleka that is one two marriage is not based on what you have marriage is not based or founded on what you have it is based on founded on what you want to achieve what you have in you and what you want to achieve and you realize that as a young person of course you cannot have that much ya kuanzia familia but you might have 
much in terms of vision where you want to go. That one is the one we're supposed to guide you whether you are ready to marry or not. Because the current position might not be very present for you. But so long as you have a vision together, you can settle as early as you want. And therefore, my answer is there is no any sufficient amount of money for someone to marry. Because even those whom we have families, pesa hajawa itosha ya kuendeleza hizo familia. Tungali tunatafuta ya kusimamia familia. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate him. So, these uh, two ministers, uh, Pastor and Minister, Pastor John Muli and Minister Bernard, they did not meet to agree on what they talk, but from experience we can gain a similarity, right? So, what is your pesa? The Meisha left. Aya, Gile, the question that you're asking, Minister Bernard, I would like you to ask it again to uh, Pastor John Muli shortly. Then we go to Miss Eva. Yes, I was saying this, sir. Huh? Yes. I have a work. Nataka hmm. kuwa. Girlfriend yangu wana kazi. And then tuna plan ku get married. Maybe before uh, uh, one month before marriage, nina futu kazi. So muna ni encourage kuwa badu. Ama kwa sababu girlfriend hana kazi. Pia mimi ni mefutu kazi. Na tushanza kuanda wedding. Tusioane, tungoje, wakati nitakuwa na kazi, ama mmoja wetu atapata kazi. Ama tuwane tutu vumiliane, kwa sababu pia unajua mwili kwa wapo bado. Maybe neza kuwa nimesumbuliwa, nataka kuwa na ye karibu. Sasa, muna tu shauri aji. Ni rushe huko mbele, ama ni muowe tu na atu na kazi sote. So that's my point. Asante. Uh, you can answer that, Pastor John Muli. Wacha ni piane maoni yangu kabla mtumishi Ben apiane mwelekeo wake utagundua kwamba either utasukuma mbele ama hautasukuma ni kwamba maisha haitasimama kwa sababu kazi imeisha na hautakosa kukula kwa sababu kazi imeisha chochote ambacho kilipaswa kuendelea katika maisha iwapo uko na kazi ama hauna bado kitaendelea na ningetaka pia nifahamu mtazamo wetu sisi wote kwamba kazi ni nini what do we call a job or work because wengi wetu tuko na mtazamo tofauti ya kazi ni nini i think work is something you do to earn money to get money after doing it Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If work is anything that you do to get money or to get a reward after doing it, then it means even after your emesha, something else will come up. And you will get to realize that in this life there is no vacuum of living. Hakuna wakati ambapo utaishi na uishi tu hivyo vwa. You realize that there is something going on. God is giving you guidance towards something. God is providing you towards something. Honor. So it has never happened. And it, will not, it will never happen in the life of a Christian where you feel that at one particular time, you must talk. Na life ni kama imesimama hawezi ukasonga. Lazima in one way or the other, maisha itasonga. So I would encourage someone, even at that particular time, wakati ambapo nasema, ni kama kazi imeisha, Na ulikuwa na mipango fulani, fulani, fulani. Don't stop doing what you are supposed to do. Just move on. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, let's appreciate Pastor John Mwili. Nasikia Masoli inajibiwa na Hekima. So, shortly, we are going to tackle the next question. Um, Minister Bennett, you had a short word on that? A commentary, thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Pastor Mul. Now, uh, on that question, Gile, you've lost a job just before you marry. Now, what I will say is this, the impetus or the call is on uh, the two of you. Okay, you and your, 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 your prospective wife. 
the call is on you. So what you do first, you both of you recognize that this is the situation at hand, okay? That our source of income has gone. And you discuss and you, you, you have to agree and say, what next? Because you need to answer those questions before you do what? You go into marriage. Tutaendelea. Tutawana. So you, you have to ask yourself those questions. And then you, at the same time you ask yourself, how are we going to sustain the after once you are married? Between the two of you, you, will ask, you, are, you are assessing your gifts, your capabilities, isn't it? You, you could have lost a job that is based on being employed, but the same skills you can use to be self-employed, isn't it? And so you, 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 between the two of you, you can say, we'll advance like Pastor Mulia may say, but there's no vacuum. This is how we are going to advance this situation, okay? But it's a call for the two of you. Do you have the stamina to survive without employment after marriage? Does the lady have the stamina to go through that season? Does the man have the stamina? Okay. Because there's no source of income, correct? And you have to accept that first. You get, you, you, you get my point. Now, if you feel that you still have time, my opinion, that you can delay it a little bit so that you get your finances in order, a modicum, money is never enough. That one we, we, we have to agree on. But the source of our sustenance, can we maybe delay? If it, by two months, maybe I will have gotten a job or I will have gotten, a, I will have gotten some engagement that is predictable. Then you can decide and say, let's hold. After that, we do what? We proceed and marry. Like I said, eh, the whole aspect of marriage is blessings, from my point of view, from your pastor, from your parents. Iso Shere, you have to do it according to your ability. Fine. So we are not debating that aspect. But the issue is, how are we going to sustain the marriage? Lack of work definitely brings challenges. That has to be accepted. Okay. It has to be accepted. There has to be, food has to be put on the table. So the two of you must come from a premise of understanding that things will be tough and we will do what? We'll go through them together. Isifike, ume convince the lady, ameingia, ameolewa na kwambia sasa, haupati kazi, hakuna pesa. You see, she must be having that understanding that we got into this marriage without employment. Are, are, we, are we clear? And we are working out this thing together. Yes. So that we avoid the blame games. Ama mutanaza kusukumwa beyond his ability. Aupati kazi, aupati kazi, two weeks imepita, one month, you get. It is a collective responsibility. The woman does her part, and the man does his part. Okay. So y the call is on you. Mujipime, mwone mutafanya, ama mutapospon because of the imminent inconvenience. Sawa, sawa. That is my personal opinion. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate him. Wow, we are learning a lot. Uh, we have people who are following us live on uh, Facebook. I want to shout out to Miss uh, Janet is following us. Let's appreciate her. Janet, thank you so much for being with us, even uh, at far. Uh, we have Sherry. Sherry is following us. Let's appreciate her. We have Mrs. Pastor John Mooney is following us. Wow. Mom, we love you so much. Thank you. And your husband is doing a great work here in the youth service. And when you see Jataja, Mujitaja, Apo, Alafututa, shout out to Seme Mubarikio Zaidi. And that's the only um, a few people I can see for now. Thank you. This is a BMI youth service. And today's topic is you then finance. On the panel, we have um, um, a, a beautiful lady. Uh, and her name is Miss Evelyn, and she is our youth chair lady. We would like uh, her to tackle a question, which is the second question on um, quitting a job to do your own business or becoming your own boss. So the question is this way When is the right time to quit a job for you to start your own business? 
if you are in the career field. Now, talking from experience, Eva, you can brief us or alert us uh, so that we may not make wrong decisions thinking we are making it right. Kumbe tunaribu. Kumbe tunachoma. Karibu. Let's appreciate her. Asante, thanks for the opportunity. Though you didn't prepare me that I will be sitting here and uh, handling that question, but nevertheless, we are going to discuss it. Uh, there is no any right time to quit uh, employment uh, for you to start business. We have successful uh, young people at even 20 who are successful entrepreneurs we still have people who are working at uh, 65, even to when there is no any retirement age, they are still, even Baba Bado Anataka Kiti at uh, his age. So there's no right time. Let's start from there. There's no right time. Uh, out of my experience, I, I didn't quit the, my job. I was working, I've been working since, uh, I was working from 2012, uh, that was 2012 October to 2019, December. I moved from the organization where I was to another one, and then COVID. So the company didn't continue, so I stayed without a job. So that is when uh, I decided to start a business uh, just small business to keep me busy, which I am doing up to date. Uh, now, about uh, business and uh, job, let's agree. How many are working here? Who are employed? Self-employed and employed. Who are employed? So the majority is self-employed. The rest is self-employed. No one can ask for no one chairman is sorry. Okay, we are close. We look for no one. Now we are going to self-employed. Klaus, you are self-employed. Those who are working, okay. So the majority, I don't know. I didn't see your hand. Employed, self-employed, or okay. I will discuss you afterwards. Uh, we have, to, you have to have a, a determination, uh, a dream or a vision. And it also depends on the people you associate yourself with. Uh, myself, I got motivated by Engineer Rasa, uh, Engineer Kamau, and another engineer called Karanja. The three of them were employed. All the, and Engineer Rasa and Engineer Karanja, they're still working. The other one is not working. They had businesses. Salary is not enough is not enough. That salary you get, it's not enough. They had side businesses. Every day you will, uh, we, share, we used to share the same office with Engineer Rasa and Engineer Kamau. They always had their errands boys coming for them when I was saying a check. Hey, even me, I wanted to sign a check. You know, it feels good. Okay, let's say your checkbook will sign. So you have to have someone you are looking at. Mentor, you have to have someone motivate because you cannot wake up from your bed and say, I want to do this unless somebody motivated you, somebody challenged you. Okay? So I, I got to learn this from them. And that is when I decided uh, to do business. I have a company which is operating, and I also have this uh, small, small business. 
a day I gave an example to Kobai. When you go to the supermarket in the evening, whether it's me, Pastor Johnny Muli, Pastor Bernard or Kobai, we are buying the same product. We are, let's say we are buying bread. The cashier can never ask me, yo pesa yako umetoa? Umefanya nini ukatoa wapi? Cannot ask John, Pastor John Muli, where do you get the money? She or he will take the money and give you the product. What I am trying to say is, it doesn't matter what you do. It's what you do, you do it with passion. Whether you are a cleaner, I always share that. I was a cleaner for three and a half years. Not that I did not go to school. I was doing my undergraduate. I did errand zakutumo, a master's graduate. So it doesn't matter what you do. What matters? What do you get at the end of the day? So you can be employed and have side business to support your finances. I was once told by engineers, and I will share, you have to have three people categories in your life. One, the one when you unangalia, the one you socialize, and the one you mentor. Those three. For you to be a successful entrepreneur and a career person. Thank you. Wow, let's appreciate Miss Eva for helping us understand the world of becoming your own boss from being employed. I hope you've gotten the concept. There is no right time. With the time you get to know when to switch. Praise God. Uh, uh, before we move on, I uh, want to appreciate uh, those who are following uh, or us live on Facebook. We have our dad, Pastor Axon Nongo. Hey! All the way from Bukavu, he's saying, uh, I am watching from Bukavu. Welcome, Papa. We love you so much. <laughs> Mrs. Papa John Muli says, um, uh, she says, um, thank you. Love you, my children. Tumemukaribisha na amejiunga nasi, anatupenda sana. Let's appreciate her. Now, a question and a concern from Sherry online. She is saying concerning men. But some men nowadays are comfortable with being provided for. How is this dealt with? Pastor John Muli. Uh, karibu kwa hiyo swali. Kuna mtu wakupata vizuri pale. Thank you, Sherry, for that question. Thank you. Uh, before I come to Sherry, I will answer her question. I still want to add something of what our dear sister Eva said here. And uh, you realize that uh, what you call employment or where you draw your salary from at the end of the month, it is somebody's business. So it is somebody you are working for. He or she gets a profit and he is in a position to pay you what you call a salary. Amen? So, at the end of the day, we are all in business. Only that some of us want to be employees of that business and be paid instead of working upwards to pay others. Amen? The second thing that I want to say, to add on top of what uh, she has said, is that there is no nobody in this world who has ever been rich by being employed. You never get rich by being employed. Because employers, they employ you not because they want to employ you, but because they have to. They have no choice. They have to employ you. Amen. So, if they have to employ you, then they will give you what they are comfortable giving you out at. Thank you. I hope it's a point noted. Let's appreciate Pastor. Okay. Pastor ben Pastor wants John to add Moses. something. Yes. Thank you. Ben, I think Ben wants to add something. Yes. Uh, now, Minister Bernard. 
Yeah. Uh, there is a question that, that has come from online. L let me first. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. Let Go ahead, add, sir. Let me add on to what Eva was saying. Eh? And it's true, there's no right time for you to transition from employment to to business. But I, and from my from my thinking is the only form of preparation is you need to have is your mind. Because you see, if you if you are employed, eh, then you would work and expect the paycheck at the end of the month. But when you become now an employer, then there are things now beca that become your responsibility. You are the person who is going to follow legisl the government legislation, the licensing, all issues, be it with the government agencies. Okay, when there are no profits, it is you to find ways out. And, and, and you see, th these are the things that make it difficult for most, most people to do what? To be self-employed or to start businesses because of the comfort of so, so what you need to do is be mentally prepared. The next thing, prepare the transition. If you had some loans and you're moving into private business, you want to start, see how you're going to take care of those employment loans. Don't just jump and you don't have a contingency plan. Because when you start the business, the first thing, it's not going to be easy. You are going to face challenges. There are things you'll need to streamline. It might even take you a while before you, you fall into the profitability bracket. Okay. So you have to be aware of this. And uh, my personal rule is you could, you could even have a six months uh, savings to take care of your recurrent expenses. Okay. If there are loans, know how you're going to deal with them then be mentally prepared. Deal with the aspects of fear. Because I've seen people, they start within two months, and they say, hey, biashara ni ngumu, natafuta nini? Kazi. Because they looked at the finished product. They were looking at profits coming in. They don't come immediately when they say, hey, nirudi kwa, kwa kwa. So it's a journey that you must be prepared mentally first. Okay. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Let's appreciate... Uh, Minister uh, Bernard Oteno. Now, we are coming to a conclusion and uh, this one is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assess, uh, we are going to have five last minutes, okay? Five minutes. And uh, this question that we are going to ask here is the third question and I want to hear from Gile, representing the youth. Maybe you just answer whether it's your concern or which area have you invested and you are seeing some fruit. The question is, which is the best investment, which are the best investment areas for the youth in the current economy? So let's have I mean, uh, uh, Sir Gile, Gulen Ruvuzo, uh, take one minute and answer that question kindly and then we will have a backup from Pastor John Muli on the same perspective. And then we are going to come to a conclusion. You know something sweet, Aina, Aisha, Sindio? So next Sunday we'll be having a similar talk. Atakama tuta expand more. So Musijali, tuna karibia kumalizia. Na gile utatupatia one minute uh, uh, point on that. Thank you, thank you. Though one minute nikidogo, I will try to summarize. Okay. I think the best area of investment for a youth nowadays is where you feel yourself comfortable. You know, there is things that I cannot do, but you, you are good to do them. Yeah. What I think is that when you do what is in your, no, no, your, your, your goal, yako, yes. is in yako. Mm. So, unaifilingi, unaitakanga. So, kifanya kitu ambao unafil, unapenda, it will be best for you. And you will gain benefits. Yes. Because unaipenda, utaifanya na nguvu, mm. utaifanya na passion. So I believe area zote ni sawa ina depends tu na vile kila mtu ana feel kwa area ambayo ako ndani. Yes. Kama unapata mavuno kwa hiyo yes. area. Yes. Aya. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate Gula Ruvuzo. Aya. Before we come to Pastor John Muli, let's go to Miss Eva representing the youth on the same uh, aspect of which areas of investment should uh, the youth uh, focus on. Thank you. 
I want to add what Ilya said, mm. uh, where you are comfortable, you can invest, eh? what you can do with passion, but I want to disagree that before you do that, you have to do a proper research because the risk of investing outside here, you can invest money today and tomorrow you have no business. So before you start anything, before you invest anything, let's do a research. First, do a research, do a market survey, understand the people on the ground, understand what is their preferences before you invest anything. Uh, that's what I was adding on what Gilea said. Research, very, very, very important. People have lost money in businesses. Or maybe, I, for example, myself, I love fashion. Go. But without proper research, if I go and open a business with clothes, of course I'll fall. And I did it. I can go. So market research is very important. Market research is very important. Let's appreciate uh, Miss Evelyn. Now, to wind it up, it will be Pastor John Muli giving us uh, a winding shot in three minutes, and uh, he will be telling us uh, uh, a general overview on what you have discussed today. And uh, still, if we can give a minute to Minister uh, Bernard, uh, you're welcome, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kubai. Before I go to the question, I want to answer our dear sister Sherry on what she was concerned about. about uh, I guess it was about those men who wants to be provided for. And uh, I'll answer her question with a question. And I would like to know, where do you meet these men? Uh, and two, what are you even doing with them? <laughs> and three, where do you even want to go with them? And by that I mean, if you happen to meet such, such a person, you should not only drop him fast, but very fast. Amen? Thank you. Now, uh, on what you, are, what you are talking about, on where you need to invest. One, uh, I'll just reiterate on what they have said. In another word to say, invest on what you know and what you understand well. Venture into the field that you well understand it. And second, the business moving and drifting towards technology, make sure you are well equipped with business and technology and that one will help us and our youth to move forward. Thank you. Let's hear from our brother Ben. Okay, th thank you Pastor Muli. Now on, on areas to invest, personally I don't like to think business in terms of which is the best area to invest in terms you see if you focus so much on the returns and you lose on vision then you cannot sustain a business so when you are starting a business first you have identified what you want to do you've done your research what but don't don't be preoccupied with the with the money first why am i saying that you see value follows money value follows money the bible says find a gifted man and you will, will not serve before obscure people. So when you create value then money follows. Money follows. Okay. So I've seen people unanza hii biashara pia ileti pesa unafunga unaruka kwa hii but what people don't do they don't study why was it not productive. So whatever you are going to start 90, 99% of the time those businesses are being done by people. Kama ni kuuza nguo, kuna mta nauza nguo. Sini kweli? If it is a, a restaurant, somebody is already operating a, a restaurant. Okay. 
So unless you do a major discovery, almost always, whatever you want to do, somebody is doing. Okay. So that's why I'm saying you disengage from just the mentality of profits alone. Your profits will come now from the value you create. Now, if let's say you are selling clothes, and I'm selling clothes, your question should be, what can I do to, pass, to supersede my competitor? Okay. And that is now what uh, Pastor John Muli is talking. Look at technology. You can do deliveries at a fee. If you are doing groceries, you can even decide, you walk to the home, the, the, the homes, you, you can deliver. Because Kuna Otamba attack Gwenda Sokoni. So value, creating value. So once you create value, then money does what? Money follows. But ukitaka kwenda kukompiti na the mamboga, ufungue kandake, asa hapo tutukuta mahanga hiko ni mingi. So create value on whatever you are doing. Okay. So the focus, yes, at the end of the day, there are profits to sustain the business, to grow. That is given. That is why you do in business. But the first thing is value. Well, how can I, if, if you are doing accommodations, what value can I do? What can I create? Okay. If you are doing, if you are cooking, can I cook differently? What on a pick a junk and whatever? Can I do it differently? Yeah? These traditional foods, whatever. So create value, then money follows. That is the first thing. The second thing, eh, in this season, eh, it's a season where the, the economic conditions are not good. So businesses are not doing well. So the temptation is to keep jumping from one to the other looking for money but it's a season where now you need to refocus your strategy now what do i do that is the question so there are things you need to do cut on the expenses be more creative with the solutions you come up with so that you maintain the competitive advantage you have over your competitors if you need to reduce the the, the labor if you need to i mean just 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 look at ways you can knock off some expenses and then do not overcharge you can do with less profit at this season so that you remain profitable. You are getting something. I think that is all. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate uh, uh, these uh, panelists today. Uh, uh, Mr. Gilles Vuzo. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate uh, Minister Bernard Otieno. And let's appreciate uh, Miss Eve Evelyn Kemunto. Our youth uh, chair lady, yes, and uh, let's appreciate Pastor John Muli. Amen. Now, Miss Evelyn, I will ask you to conclude the service for us. And uh, if possible, once you finish talking, you will let Pastor John Muli to pray for us. And then we call it a close for today. Uh, Pastor Axon Nongo Amesema. Kazi ni kutafuta pato wala sio kuitafuna. Kwa hivyo unachokipata usikitafune. Tupigie makofi. Asante sana our dad Pastor Axon all the way from Bukavu. We love you and thank you for following us today. Welcome Eva. Thank you. Yeah, Pastor John Muli. Hiyo ya sheri. Ameuliza wao wanaume wanakwanga wapi. Na mnafanya nini na wao? Eh hey moto hiyo nzito tuko na wao on our daily basis every, we meet them every single day in the, everywhere wale wa zile enzi wa work very hard na ku provide labda age yako baba zetu sai ladies wako more empowered than men and uh, it's actually a challenge a big one in the next generation so wako Wako, wako, wengi sana. Wengi. <laughs> Tumemaliza. <laughs> I'm asking that maybe we can tackle this uh, topic next week. Next Sunday, okay? Just because of time, maybe we can give Pastor John Muli to pray for us and uh, also prepare your giving and so that we come to a close. Welcome, Pastor John Muli. Hallelujah. Uh, let us pray. I didn't know whether they exist. Uh, we'll deal with them. Let us pray. Father, 
in the name of the living God, our creator, our sustainer. You have given us a new day this day, this morning. You have given us King of glory another opportunity to serve you, Master and our Savior. We commit this day unto you. I commit your sons and daughters unto you. I commit this ministry of youth service unto you, my Father, in the name of the living God. Whatever we have shared, whatever we have discussed in this forum, let it be productive in their lives in the name of the living God. Father, may you open up their minds. May you renew their strength. May you give them ideas, King of glory. More important, our Father and our Master, may you land them in safe hands, King of glory, in the name of the living God. Loving Father, when you give them ideas, King of glory, may you give besides them, my Father, people who can walk with their visions, people who can uh, support them, in the name of the living God. And I rebuke the spirit of cankerworms that comes along in a figure of a human being. In the name of the living God, Heavenly Father, may you bless the work of our hands. King of glory, may you be highly exalted by the testimony that's going to be given even by our friends that we are blessed of you. King of glory, we love you and we adore you. And so we give our offering for this service. Our Father, we pray that you are going to bless each and every one of us. Your power is going to cover us. And King of glory, we are going to shine and walk in dominion for you, our Savior, in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can come and see, and, uh, see you in the main service. God bless you. And thank you all for coming. Feel blessed all the time. Amen. Prepare more questions. We shall have an interactive session on Sunday still on various topics that will come along. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday today. Amen.